Okay, everybody. Derek Shelton here. Questions for Derek? Nothing like the four o'clock game ruining your guys' dinner plans. Sorry about that. Uh, unbelievable job. Continue to come back. You know, bullpen again. Big story, but uh, you know, guys continue to grind through at bats and uh, happy for stalls because if you catch twelve innings, man, getting a walk off is nice. Shelton, you mentioned the bullpen. Um, you know, with the way that those guys are pitching it, do you feel confident, like? putting a guy in any situation, you kind of had to do that in those extra innings tonight. Yeah, I mean, we saw guys step up and do different things. I mean, you know, give us multiple innings. Sammy gave us two innings. Cricky gave us two innings. Uh, and, you know, those extra innings innings are not not easy because of the fact they start with the runner in scoring position. So they really stepped up, threw the ball well, and, uh, you know, it's it, kudos to them because they, they gave us a chance to win the game. and. And our offense did a nice job of battling back and creating opportunities and, and taking advantage of, of miscues. Shelty, how would you describe that eighth inning rally? I mean, it was so odd, like a bunch of different things happened. Obviously, the, the big play was the drop ball at, at, at first. But I guess from a manager's perspective, how do you kind of view that rally? Uh, we were fortunate. But the one thing about it is we put the ball in play. And when you put the ball in play, anything can happen. And I think we saw it in, in that situation. Newman in that inning, grinding out the at-bat and then scoring from second on that play I mean, how it's kind of a dumb question but can you really underestimate or undersell how valuable he was no yeah. you can't understand you i think the one thing alex and that's a really good point you can't undersell grinding out at bat and fouling off pitches we saw stallings do it uh opening night against them where he fouled off fouled off and uh you know got the double i i think you see it on both sides i think you saw starling do it off richie you know, he battled through and, and battled off pitches. And if you extend it bats, you know, uh, at some point a pitcher is going to make a mistake. And, and our guys did a good job of grinding through it. Newman did a good job of grinding through it. And, you know, then we get a mistake and we capitalize. Richie's had uh, th runs in three of his past four games. Is there anything concerning or different that you're seeing from him than when he was on that dominant stretch to start the season? No, not at all. I mean, tonight he made one bad pitch. He got a pitch up to Aguilar, who's a really good hitter, and, and he hit it for a base hit. But he bounced back and executed pitches. So the least of my worries at any point is Richie Rodriguez. You're muted, Johnny. Uh, I was just going to ask, this is Stallings, what, third walk-off of the year? I know it's his fifth career walk-off, but it seems like he's come up big in a few of those spots. Is he approaching the ice in the veins category? Is he becoming one of those guys that you talk about? Yeah, he's getting close. You know, I mean, if you spend any time around Stalls, it's not like he's overexcited. We don't have an overexcited group. And and uh, nice job. Simber's not an easy guy to hit if you're right on right. I mean, he's throwing it from the ground and uh, – didn't try to do too much. And I, I think that's the the one beautiful thing about Jacob Stallings is in his at-bats, you never see him try to do too much. And that's really advantageous when you're in those situations. Shelty, DeYoung's talked about, you know, wanting to go up with the fastball more. He got burned three times tonight with that. Do you see anything different compared to that first start he had up here? Yeah, I mean, he, he left some fastballs just center cut in, in the middle of the plate and, and they didn't miss them. And, you know, there's a, there's a fine line between going at the top and, and getting a pop up and leaving that ball a little bit down. I, I thought the first time through the order, his breaking stuff was really sharp. And the second time through, it wasn't as sharp. And because of it, the fastball didn't play as well. Go ahead, John. Oh, he's, he's muted again. No, nope, you're muted again, John. You're muted again. Sorry about that. My computer's freezing up, which is kind of odd on a 112 degree day. But anyway, uh, we're used to that with Mike, but not you. But that's all right. <laughs> hey, somebody's got to pick up some of the load sometimes, too. We can't put it all on Mike. Hey, uh, Jake, Jacob's got uh, five walk off hits in his career, and it's not a real long career. So, I mean, that's a pretty good number for a guy that's played for all the longer he has. Why do you think he's so good in that situation? Uh, I think he doesn't try to do too much. I think that's the the big thing. You know, you get in situations as you as you get older, and you realize, hey, I'm going to put the ball in play. I'm going to take a short swing. Uh, you know, not trying to do not trying to do anything special. And because of it, you know, he had a really good at bat off a, a sidearm guy that's very challenging and it's been very good. Uh, but I, I think it's more just he he stays within his approach. Thank you. 
Uh, all good. No. One quick one. Just, just be honest. Did you think he, Brian, got all of it there in the in the bottom of the twelfth? Donnie did. I, uh, I didn't. I thought Donnie was going to jump over the damn rail. Uh, no, I, I didn't. I didn't think he got it. The the way the way that Starling went after it, I, I thought it was in the ballpark. Was I hoping he got it? Yeah, one hundred percent. But uh, Donnie thought he got it. All good. All right, guys. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Chase DeYoung at the podium. Questions for Chase? Chase, given the given the um, you know the way that your start kind of went there in the in the third, fourth, and fifth innings, or, or I guess it was fourth and fifth innings that they kind of hit you up with some home runs. I guess what 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 sort of went wrong? It looked like a couple fastballs were getting left over the middle of the plate. Yeah, there's a few adjustments I need to make, and just kind of the thought process of how to handle a lineup. Um, you know, I think the adjustments that I'm going to make are something that will be easily done. Uh, just talking through it with O a little bit. We're going to tinker a little bit this week. Really think the the final line was better than it feels, I guess. I guess the three long balls obviously hurt a little bit. I mean, I looked at the pitch to Jazz that really wasn't a bad pitch. Uh, the other ones, it's just, I mean, when I'm ahead, I'm really good. When I'm behind, I get hit hard. So I need to work ahead and I need to figure out a way to, when I'm behind the count, get off the barrel. You know, I think I gave up every hit was an extra base hit today and that's obviously not gonna benefit me. So if there's a way that making these adjustments leading into my next start that we can get off the barrel when we're behind the count, then I think my starts are gonna go significantly better than what I had today. What do you think of the the bullpen efforts, not just tonight, but also last night to cover enough innings and, you know, rest the bullpen for today whenever it goes 12 innings? I can't sing those guys' praises enough. Those guys down there are animals. I mean, they are getting the job done night, night in, night out, and they are some of the most competitive guys that I've ever been around. Um, they want the ball. They want to go out there, and they – it's – phenomenal to come out of a game and know that those guys are the guys coming in behind me. Um, you know, I've admired their work from from afar this year. And now that I'm here on the team with them, I can't say enough about those guys. They are animals down there. Chase, so you ever been in a spot like like Bender was for the Marlins there covering, covering over there and kind of, you know, obviously looked like it just slipped through his hands there cover first? Uh, I, just thinking off the top of my head, I, I can't think of a certain time. I know I've been in games where stuff just speeds up on you. You know, it's it's a hard game. Uh, you you got to be over there to cover first, make pitches, and do everything like that. I, I feel for the guy. I think everybody that's ever put on a uniform and, and, you know, pitched has had innings like that. So they happen. Um, I can't think of any off the top of my head, but I am sure that I have had innings like that, yes. All good for Chase. Okay. Thanks. All right, thank you for holding on, guys. Uh, Jacob Stallings here. Questions for Jacob? Jacob, I think I asked you after the walk-off homer if you uh, feel like you've caught Kevin Newman in the uh, walk-off king sort of uh, competition here. I'll ask you again. Do you feel like this one solidifies it? Are you getting close at this point, or what's the deal? Uh, he still has one more than me, right? I think he has like six, I think. So, um, no, he's still got it. He's, he's still got it. Jacob, you said the other night you didn't really have an answer for all your late game heroics that you seem to come up with all the time. Were you holding out on us when you said that, or is there really a secret to this? No, I mean, I, I really don't have an explanation for it. Um, you know, I think the game is most enjoyable for me when it's just about competing and, and trying to win. And, um, you know, it's very easy to get internal with your thoughts just in a random at bat in the fourth inning, you know, or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, but I think the most fun about, part about the game for me is is competing and, and trying to win. So, um, 
maybe maybe that's it. But no, I really don't have much of an answer for you. Jake, the bullpen has allowed, I think, only one earned run in the past 14 innings, the past two games. Um, what's it like calling pitches for a group when it, they're in a groove like that? Yeah, I mean, they're – I mean, it's it's not just one guy. I mean, like you said, 14 innings in two games. I mean, that's a pretty collective group effort, and um, it's been that way the whole year. I mean, you know, we have one guy maybe give up a run, and, you know, everybody else picks him up, and – um, it's just, it's just been like that the whole year and it's really not surprising to us anymore just because they've been doing it and, um, they're all ready to play every single day. And, um, it's just a really good group and, uh, you really can't say enough about those guys. Thank you. Know, you guys have these, these low gate late game situations coming up lately that you've been on the right end of, you know, your record is, is obviously what it is. What, what do you think is driving the kind of the belief level of this team um, that you guys are continuing to be able to compete when the game gets sideways sometimes and, and you've been able to come up in these situations? Well, I would say we have a group of guys who um, doesn't take at bats off and, and doesn't take games off. And um, that's, I mean, you see it with, you know, Michael Perez hits a roll over a ground ball, but he busts his butt down to first base and makes the pitcher take his eye off the, the ball right before he touches first. And um, it's just stuff like that, you know, it's just little things, you know, he easily could have pouted and not run hard and it's an easy out, but, um, but, you know, guys just don't take at bats off. Um, doing well is, is important to everybody. And, um, you know, nobody, nobody on our team is, is gonna um, give that bat away because it's important to them and, um, you know, just just in general, Key Brian Hayes makes our team a lot better. So um, that's a big uh, big contributor for the last three days, for sure. Jake, we saw Crick really, you know, get pumped up after unloading those couple of frisbees on Devers at the end of it. We, we're seeing it from just our angle, that pitch just moving insanely. But from your point of view, how much is it moving compared to last year, even the couple years before him? I mean, it's just good to see him healthy. Um, you know, it's like you said, it's a wipeout slider and, and that's how it was, um, you know, in 19 before, before he had some of the injuries and um, it's really good to see him throwing that thing. I mean, he just walked in, um, it, you know, it, it, it's so good. Like to left-handed hitters, I honestly have to set up a way to give him that target. Um, just, just so he starts it at me, and and I mean, you go if you go watch the Devers strikeout, I'm setting up away, and he's just letting it rip, and it goes back foot. So um, it's really good to see him healthy and, and doing well. And obviously, it was two huge innings for us. So, yeah. Jake, did uh, years of watching Starling Marte in center field help you at all in the tenth when you had to tag up for that sack fly? I, I was so tired and I, I know how good his arm is. I thought there was a chance that he could throw me out. So I wasn't even looking and I just ran as fast as I could because I've seen him make enough of those throws to know that he's more than capable of throwing me out. Oh, good for Jacob. Oh, go ahead, Mike, go ahead. Yeah, one more, because Elty mentioned it too. And I think it was um, probably underappreciated for catchers. Like in a 12 inning game, catching all 12 innings and then still having the sort of stamina to hit that. Like, uh, you know, I know that maybe you think it's funny, but how, how are you feeling right now? Like, is that is that just a grind at this point? Or like, how how do you feel afterwards? Does adrenaline kind of take over all that? Um, I feel, you know, fine right now, honestly. Um, there, were, there were a couple of times in the game that, you know, I got fatigued or, you know, whatever you want to call it, but um, I think more mentally tired than um, physically, typically. Um, I mean, when it's really hot day game, then physically as well. But, um, you know, just calling all the pitches and, and all the game situations and trying to focus for at bats, I would say mentally it's, it's more of a grind than physically. OK, all good for Jacob. Thank you. I'll bring Kyle over next. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Jake.
All right, everybody, Kyle Crick. Any questions for Kyle? Kyle, what's the um, emotions of pitching a one, two, three inning and then being in line for the loss afterwards? And then how do you kind of recenter yourself after that to go back out there? I think you have confidence in your team. You have faith that they're going to go do the same thing that just happened, move a guy over, you know, get the guy in and, and do exactly what happened the inning before. Um, I mean, I think as a bullpen, we grab the ball knowing that our hitters are going to get the job done too. It's a team sport. Jacob called a great game, all game. And yeah, it was one of those, one of those uh, dog fights really. Um, and we came out on top. Very fitting shirt after what you did to Devers in the 11th inning right there. Those look like two of the nastier sliders you've thrown all year. Did they feel like it too? I think there's some adrenaline going there and it makes it uh, a little easier to finish your pitches when, when you have that kind of situation. Uh, the, the biggest pitch was the pitch before to Marte to get him to get him into two. He's a tough guy to double up and, and we were trying to do it uh, from pitch one. It wasn't necessarily a swing and miss scenario. We, I wanted him on the ground. I needed two there. Uh, and, and we got it, you know, and it was credit to stalls for calling a great game. Kyle, did the thought ever cross your mind that you might hit or was that just totally out of the question? Did you know that for sure it was going to be a pinch hit situation? I've been on deck four times and I've never got to hit. So I never really thought about it, honestly. I, I've been the guy that, that gets out there on deck, grabs a bat and some pine tar, and, and then he sits down. Someone else comes in. Uh, in all seriousness, no, the, the bullpen has, you know, been great the last two games, especially, you know, yesterday's strong together. I know that wasn't necessarily you. Today, a couple blank innings and extra innings with extra runner, too. Um, you know, what does that say about the group to be able to step up, uh, well, you know, say, when? I'd say it wasn't it. the last two days. It doesn't even count. I mean, all year this bullpen's been dogs. You know, they, they want the ball and, and they grab it and they go for it. I mean, you saw it yesterday with Dwayne and Strat. Both those guys just grabbed it and were dogs and went out there and got outs. You know, those are those are two big guys that have been, you know, in, in roles that there's they're having success in, but they're also thriving in. I mean, both of them covered seven innings yesterday and really they were the heartbeat of the team yesterday. Cal, I know it doesn't change your attack plan to enter in the extra innings with the automatic runner on, but does it how different does it feel to come in in that situation versus, you know, coming in regularly in the eighth with the bases empty? Yeah. I mean, you always want the lead lady, but uh, in, in those type of situations, you want to get them in the air and in the infield, or you want to strike them out because it's much easier, you know, to get your to get what you need to get done if you get the lead lady. And that's always been stressed by pitching coaches in the minor leagues, the big leagues, all of them stress the lead lady. And, and that's the first out of the inning. And just to get that is big for me. All good for Kyle. Okay, Kyle. thank you. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Kyle? Oh, wait, Greg Brown. Go ahead, oh. Greg. Well, yeah, I'm sorry, I don't know how to how to work this thing. This is new. Uh, Kyle, when did you know that you were going to go out for a second inning? And because um, it's not the first time this year you've gone too. But when did you know? Because Holmes was loosening. It looked like Holmes was going to go out there. Well, usually Shelty comes up to you after you throw, and he lets you know pretty quickly if you're going back out or you know if you're if you're done. And he didn't say anything to me in that particular scenario, so I kind of knew that I had it. And, you know, and, and in those, those particular situations, you know, you want it. The game's on the line. We've just tied it back. And you want to go out and you want to throw a zero up. And, it, and I think uh, this day particularly, it wasn't just me with that mindset. It's everybody. It's everyone coming out of the bullpen as a dog. And that's how we view it. We want to throw zeros, and that's, that's our deal. I think uh, DeYoung just called you guys a bunch of animals. That's, that that's pretty much a – is that befitting of you guys? I think we're evolving into those animals. Yeah, we are. I mean, as the season progresses, you see the guys who want the ball. And, yeah, I, I would go as far as to say we're, we're animals. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. <laughs> I'll go with that one. All right, we're good. Thanks, guys.